What is up, everybody? It is Monday night. It is Living Force time. We got a great show for you all about your questions. It's going to be very fun, very laid back. And it all begins with a man from Texas and his desire to punch it. Welcome to the Living Force Utini Network podcast, all about your questions tonight. I'm one of your hosts, Eric Eilerson, and joining me is the full crew of friendship. That's right. It's just friends here, except for you. Uh, but first, it's Dr. Corey Helton. Hey, man. Hi. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Were you talking to me or somebody else? No, I was talking to a random audience member. They know who they are. <laughs> oh, or God, do like, they? <laughs> We're not friends. Dr. Corey Hilton. It's like, ouch, man, that kind of hurts. <laughs> no, we are lovely friends. I, I watched your whole YouTube video this morning while I was brushing my teeth. Hell yeah. It's a long... <laughs> you brush your teeth for like seven minutes? It's a long time, No, bro. I started... It was flossing was involved. Yeah, I watched, uh, if y'all missed a couple weeks ago, Corey has a Doc and Mental YouTube channel where he and his amazing, better than him wife are making a trailer, and they put up a fl uh, video this morning all about flooring, and I watched flooring. the whole damn thing. <laughs> flooring! Good, I'm glad. Flooring! <laughs> glad you're Whoa, enjoying it. I'm having a great time, but I'm having an even better time now that Dr. Charles Hankel is here with that glorious natural lighting. Look at that. What's going on, everybody? Uh, can I tell a quick story? You guys know this story, but our audience doesn't know this story. Uh, I moved recently. I think we talked about this on the show. And at all the apartments in my building, there's a little shelf outside the front door and people put little potted plants on it. Uh, my neighbor, who's a little bit out there, has a pink flamingo on it. And I was going to the gym earlier today. Someone had a plush baby Grogu, a baby Yoda on their shelf. And I was like, I'm, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. To you. <laughs> I went home. I got one of my Utini stickers, which I think you can still get on our. Oh, website. absolutely not. There's no way. No, they're not there. Don't <laughs> not the old school them. ones. I still have some clearly. And I wrote our information on the back of it. And I went back and I put that little sticker in baby Grogu's hand. And there is the picture. And uh, <laughs> if you're listening in the future, welcome. I'm glad it worked out. You live by Charles. <laughs> for now well done that no that's awesome and uh i'm always one for good plugs always one for branding especially to like-minded fans that maybe won't be weird in your building so congratulations but the largest congratulations goes to you charles goes to you Corey, to me and to everyone watching the video show listening to the audio who is lucky enough to bear the witness of Wes Jenkins, who's still here. What's up, dude? Like I said, every episode, you outdo yourself every single time. Way to go, Eric. These these transitions are the best. Hello, episode everyone. A thousand is just going to be such drastic hyperbole. It's going to be like... Yeah, but please keep them coming. <laughs> you got it. Well... You are here. We are all here. You're here watching. A lot of comments in the chat already about my shirt. If you're an audio listener, I'm wearing my Clone Wars shirt today. I believe I got this at Her Universe at a clearance sale at some point, but it had Rex, Ahsoka, Anakin, Obi-Wan. And weirdly, like, oh, this isn't the Oh, yeah, Yoda also. Because they're like, Yoda's the star of the Clone Wars show, if you've never seen it. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> um, everyone, welcome. And tonight, as we said at the top, it's an all-questions show. We just had our two-part Rising Storm Roundtable, which I absolutely loved and left me devastated. So we decided what better way to kind of jack up the energy again uh, than by answering questions from you, our listeners and our viewers. We got questions on Discord, on Twitter, on email, all these things. So we're going to be be chatting about what you want to hear um and we haven't read them all yet so fingers crossed but before we get into all that Corey, we have an announcement to make that people have been waiting in the community for like over a year yeah what happened very long time very long time so we uh long story short we are releasing the third iteration of the utini bookshelf the software Woo! that's right Woo! Woo! Yay! 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 Oh my God. What is that? 
Oh, there we go. Oh, that that's kind so of much better. <laughs> yeah. So we are we're releasing uh, the third iteration of the Utini Bookshelf, which is a software that we've built several times over the years to allow people to track their Star Wars books. Now, uh, the last versions that we had on the website were a little clunky. It was pretty hacky. Uh, didn't really work super, McClunky. super well. Yeah, McClunky, yes. And uh, yeah. so we have been kind of scratching our heads to try to figure out what the best solution for this is going forward. And we have built a new one. We, as in really Emma, built the whole thing yes. pretty, pretty much Emma by Park. herself. Yeah, continues to be the absolute MVP of utini.com. And uh, she's really outdone herself. So the bookshelf is live right now. We built it on a platform called Coda. I can show it to you here in just a second. You can find it by going to our website, uh, utini.com slash bookshelf. And have we have like some good tutorials on here about how to set it up. We talk about Coda a little bit. And we show you all about how to use it. Now, um, this bookshelf is a little different than other bookshelves that we've had before in that it allows you to really do a lot of customization because Coda is essentially like a note-taking app um, that we use uh, at Utini all the time. Every single day, our entire company is managed inside of Coda. And uh, it actually has a really cool like table database system inside of it that allows you to really do some cool stuff. So let me let me show you kind of what, what we got here. So here is, uh, this is a version of the Utini bookshelf. This is just the Canon books. And you see across the top there, there are different uh, different pages. So you can go into the My Books section. You can have a look at like uh, adult novels. Uh, let's see what else you want to see. Young adult novels would be good. And then we're going to select Unmarked. Then look at the cover view. Now you can like mark all your books as read. You can mark them as read. You can mark them as owned. Um, it's really rad. You can like really, really do a lot of cool stuff. And because this is a document that you own, like it totally belongs to you. Um, it's like having an Excel document or something. You can do whatever you want to with it. If you want to create pages and create notes about books that you're reading, any of that kind of stuff, you have really unlimited amount of customization, which you've really never had before with any versions of the Utini bookshelf. So I'm super excited to get this thing out. There's some really good tutorials on, on there. The learning curve is a little bit there. It's a little harder to use than other iterations of the app, but I don't know. I, I kind of figure that folks that want to like track their Star Wars reading in detail or kind of nerds anyway. So, you know, yeah, just like nerds! the rest of us, just like the rest of us. So check it out. You see com slash bookshelf. Go play with it. Yeah. And again, another just wondrously massive congratulations to our very own Emma, who was so key in getting that together over the last year. Um, and I will admit, Coda is something that Corey brought to us a while back. We changed the entirety of Utini over to Coda and there were growing pains, AKA I, I hated it. Um, that's, that's the pain. I was the pain. As, and then I had to grow. Um, and if I can figure out Coda, anyone can. And if you want it, like you said, link is also in the doobly-doo below. Uh, Wes has been great with all those descriptions, so check that out. Get your own collection going. And once you have your collection all set, share that in the Utini Discord. Go into the Collections tab. Let us see screenshots of your own bookshelf. Let us see things. Let's share with other people. You know, flaunt your shelves. That's what we all love doing, right? So... Congratulations, everyone that made it so. We hope you all enjoy it. Next up, something that we enjoy is our Patreon community and our lovely patrons. And we want to say thank you to Zach E., who joined our Patreon this week just in time, almost just in time, for our Patreon event. That is, again, coming up August 20th, Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern. The four slash five of us with Tim met this week. We we got the details out of what's going on next Friday. Guys, do we want to give like a sneak peek of what people can, I guess, maybe kind of expect from their hard earned uh, Patreon dollars that they, again, you may subscribe anytime before the event starts next Friday. That's right. I mean, what are we doing? an unfiltered event. There's going to be... Uh, copious of amounts of alcohol involved yep. um alcohol language and yes and i'm almost um i'm almost scared to find out uh what i'm going to look like after mm -hmm. uh, not drinking since <laughs> january right. so and um... as wes told us right before the show he may die from this event so mm. that's good yeah, you might know be it. it might be the that might be the final one so we're gonna have a <laughs> drunk trivia night uh yep. timothy has been kind enough to um, he is going to host the trivia questions. Uh, we bought a uh, we bought a version of uh, what is it? What is it, Trivial Pursuit? The trivial Pursuit. Trivial Pursuit. Yeah. We bought Trivial Pursuit off of eBay the other night <laughs> and yep. mailed it to Tim. And he, we're going to have a a giant game of drunk trivia. We we put we're putting some work into it too. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So. Yep. And also, I will say, I saw this on Patreon. It was great. Tim went into the All Patrons channel. So if you haven't been in Discord in a while, he did ask all of our patrons. 
for suggestions on questions. So if you are a patron, go into that all patrons uh, Patreon channel, check it out, then DM Tim because we don't want to see anything. We, like on this show, are going to be drastically underprepared. Um, so make sure you tell Tim questions, and the harder or more fun they are, the more we will suffer. And isn't that what you pay your money for? <laughs> and right. Corey so, is starting. Corey is starting early right now. Right. And yes, Cheryl, we will be saying fudge all night long. All the fudges, <laughs> not all the gun a, darts. Not a family-friendly event. Let's just go. True. Ahead and say that. <laughs> True. If you. Uh, Put it on in front of your, you know, Sunday your school kids, children. They're going to learn something. They are going to learn something. <laughs> <laughs> and well, I'm going to be the teacher. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you know who should be the teacher of this next segment is Charles. Teach us about our patron of the week. Who do we got? All right. Patron of the week this week is none other than Josiah Clark. And Josiah says, hello, the Living Force podcast. My name is Josiah and I am from Ohio. Star Wars was first introduced to me by my dad at a young age. Eventually, I needed more than just those movies and had to learn more about a galaxy far, far away. I clearly remember picking up the young Boba Fett books in my school's library, which gave me my first taste yes. of the expanded universe. I stopped reading Star Wars books as my interest expanded, but I never forgot how enjoyable those books were. It wasn't until early 2020 that I finally decided to get back into Star Wars books. This led me to the living force when I frantically searched for anyone who was talking about the first Alphabet Squadron novel. I realized that Utini was something special from the, that first round table. Mm -hmm. I chose to be a patron because I believe in the much needed positive fan community that Utini fosters. Listening to the living force has deepened my love for Star Wars and has given me a positive outlook that has allowed me to introduce the movies and the expanded media to some of my closest friends. My favorite Star Wars story is definitely the final arc of the Clone Wars series. I was the perfect age to see the Clone Wars movies in, or the Clone Wars movie in theaters in 2008. I watched every single episode of the series when they aired on Friday nights on Cartoon Network. While I loved the movies, the Clone Wars was what Star Wars truly was to me as a kid. The story seemed to mature with me, which gave me an even deeper connection with the show, and I was heartbroken with this cancellation in 2013. The final arc of the series in 2020 was the exact closure I needed for a show that I love so dearly, and I will never forget the emotion when I watched it for the first time. My question for the hosts. Star Wars has a lot of unique concepts and characters that sometimes end up being explored in other media. What part of the Skywalker saga would you want to be explored in more depth in other media? Mm, that is a great phenomenal question. Question. Yeah. Uh, and before we answer it, though, I, I want to. I really got kind of emotional as you read that, Charles. I didn't expect to. Like, Josiah, your 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 talk about finding Utini and then having that like give you the the joy to like talk to your friends about Star Wars and like great like that's. I, I sometimes forget to talk so much about the reason why we do this, and that is literally it. And yeah, that it it's, Absolutely. you know, we do the show, and I love I love you guys, and I love everyone that watches our shows and listens to it and, like, that reads the articles. But, man, the fact that, that some of y'all are finding this community that fills you with that passion, you want to spread that joy to those that you care about, and then they spread it to someone, they spread it to someone, like, it's a it's a shatter point, if you will. Oh, my gosh. Um, of positivity and that Very just good. that really means that means a lot so I, so I thank like you the bit that he says too about how he kind of grew up and aged with the clone wars oh, and yeah. it's cool because so cool. you know i feel that way i assume you guys feel that way about like yeah. the prequel films when they were coming out um people are still feeling that way today probably with the bad batch with the mandalorian yeah. like it's mm -hmm. it's fantastic that people are still having that experience 100 yeah. percent. all right but now the question, question. What part of the Skywalker saga mm. would you want to be explored in more depth than other media? I have an immediate answer. Like go, go, okay. Wes. I hope I'm not like stealing this from you because I know Ray's your favorite character. Um, I am such a sucker for continuity, like continuing a story, right? And I really want to know what the heck happens with Ray and the the, the purpose of the Jedi and the Jedi Order, oh. and like you know, we will eventually get that story, right? It's not this. It's just. All no Star Wars is like untouchable, right? Like right. anything mm, can be right. told, and they got to give it a couple years, <laughs> maybe even a long time, maybe even a decade or something crazy like that. But like, I really want to know how the Jedi Order is like rebuilt. Like, what is what mm -hmm. is old Grandmaster <clears throat> Ray like? Like, I mean, that's what medium do you want? <clears throat> oh man, I mean, 
something like the High Republic would be awesome, like with a giant, like doing books or comics. Yeah, that like kind of, all deal? of it. Yeah, like like a like a an initiative. Like the, that's this oh, is the future cool. of Star Wars, right? Like Ooh. it's you know like like thirty years yeah. down the road, well after anybody we know is alive. Like it's just in the universe, know. not yeah. like in the world. No, no, I'll be dead <laughs> after human race clear. is dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's great. That's great. Uh, I also have one that sprung up. If I can jump in immediately oh, all right i mean sure yeah i do i do no i know west west tell me i'm gonna drink i'm gonna drink my, I'm drink my white claw you know? this is gonna be funny when west doesn't have an answer yeah yet. right <laughs> so i'm gonna go completely opposite of you Corey, but with the ray in the theme um so the ancient jedi texts mm -hmm. let's say we have a story or a group of books that gives us the origin or the beginning of those jedi texts because mm. there's remember when we were talking about um those books when we were doing the uh the reference books episode mm -hmm. and there was there was a book that had two bindings in it because it was being added on uh -huh. like who was adding on to that like oh, where yeah. where did they put in that Ooh, yeah. into those, those secrets for the jedi and who did that like and all those years and years and years and decades yeah. and millennia i guess oh, that's that have cool. put those together so that's something i'd like to to look into i like that um I'm going to go, again, another completely different direction, which is why this question is so much fun, right? I'm going to go prequel era, and I'm going to say the medium I want this to happen is a video game. And it's inspired by the upcoming Hogwarts Legacy game where, like, you make a wizard and you go through the seven years of Hogwarts. I want that game, oh my God. <laughs> but you're Anakin. And you wow. go through Anakin's Padawan training, playing as him and leveling up throughout... Um, throughout the game <laughs> how so, soon do you turn into children. darth vader do you turn into him when you're seven or do you turn into him when you're 17 <laughs> yeah exactly it was, oh, it, man. it's like that moment right we're like we we're talking about last episode or something where we're like there's so much space between episodes one and yeah. two where mm -hmm. we don't have content and how cool yeah. it, it to play as anakin and experience those story beats um as you become more powerful would, as a student you so. would learn a lot about people playing that yeah, game i think like, yep Oh, yeah. How many Padawans can I, I kill? It's like, stop I it. I had to do this. Like, <laughs> like, he, there's like a press X to trip, you know, little Josiah over here. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, Josiah. But like, <laughs> you know, but like, what classes? Like, do you go to class with like Master Sanube? Do you like go to class with Yoda? Like, that'd be cool. Yeah. It's like the Sims. I like that. Yeah, the exactly. Sims. <laughs> Charles, what do you think, man? Um, I'm going to stay on brand for myself here. I'm going to stay in the prequel era, too. You guys know I want something pod racing like i need it oh um, right yeah. right yeah. Yeah. I, I would love like a, a redo of the whole like shadows of the empire like give me a novel that ties into a video game and all that stuff like a a soundtrack i want all of it um i just i i need more pod racing everyone mm -hmm. loves it there's no reason yeah. not to That's let's right. do yep. this Nobody dislikes the pod racing scene in Phantom Menace. Like everybody's always like, "Oh, the Canto yeah. Bite scene is so dumb in the Last Jedi," but nobody says that about the pod racing scene yeah. in Phantom Menace because it's phenomenal. It's the best part. It's of the so movie. fun. It was it's revolutionary so cool. too. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And now with like use like the Forza engine and do like the ultra realistic vehicles and like oh usually like having surround sound Dolby headphones and having the pod racer like sounds vibrating in your head uh, or VR. Whoa, yes. VR pod racing. <laughs> and then you're in your living room just going like, ah! Ah! <laughs> more like just projectile vomiting from the dizziness oh my God. that you have from It'd be terrible. Racing. Running into your TV. You, you remember, this, remember this goofy like vest that I shared with you guys a couple weeks yeah, ago that have like the base vest. and stuff? Yeah. Can you imagine being in Saboba's like <laughs> pod racer? You're just sitting in your gaming uh, chair like, okay. <laughs> So yeah, one of those. Um, thank you for the question, <laughs> Josiah. Um, and to everyone else uh, in our Patreon community, thank you so much. If you want to join in on the fun, head over to utini.com slash Patreon or patreon.com slash utini. You still got just about a week and a half before our Patreon event. So join up. And again, keep your eyes out for Tim's message on how you can be our next patron of the week or head to our all patrons Discord channel to throw in some questions that we're going to have to answer in a little bit. All right, now it is time for our shortest ever Star Wars Weekly Roundup. Do we it's have the thing? Star Wars Weekly Roundup. But in air. But in air. Now, this is a weird one for us, everyone, on the Star Wars Weekly Roundup, because as you may know, we had a Thursday show. And between Thursday and Monday, not a ton of news. 
Bad Batch happened. <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, yeah. Go check out Bounty Hunt. But we do have one thing we have to announce this week. Wes, what is it? Okay, so we have on, on our hands for the past month is the Rising Storm by Kevin Scott out of print variant cover version. Um, and we're giving that away to a lucky um, a lucky subscriber, a lucky what a commenter from YouTube. Um, but we're Trimier. not only get the book, yes, not only get the book, but you also get the tote that comes with it. So um, tote. we tote are going to spin the wheel right yes. now of all the names that were entered, and we're going to announce the winner here shortly. Corey, if you could okay. spin that wheel. Uh, you know, I don't know that I don't know that all my sound effects come through the. It's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll do the sound for it. Just, just spin it. Wait, is the pod again? Or is the wheel? Here we go. And the winner is. So I got. Be nasty. Be nasty. Be nasty. Is he in our chat? He usually is, but he might not be. More like be a winner. Yeah, congratulations, Be Nasty. So yep. all you got to do is send us a direct message, and I'll get your information, and I will have it shipped out to you this week. We promise that. not to but steal I will also your send you, identity. Correct. I'll send a you a DM bit. after the show, too. So Yeah. But congratulations, congratulations. man. Woo! Yeah, make we're sure going to try to do that more. Yeah, make sure you post a pic of, uh, of when you get it. Yes, please. Marketing. So congratulations. And again... All, not all exclusive covers, because as you can see next to me, some books have many exclusive covers, and we're not going to give away all of them, but keep your eyes peeled for more giveaways. And if you didn't win this one, that's okay, because guess what? There's a ton more Star Wars coming up that you get to buy yourself, including this Wednesday, we had the Monster of Temple Peak number one from IDW Comics. On August 31st, we have the High Republic Tempest Runner, the audio drama with the full cast. And September 7th, we have the Life Day Treasury and the Edge of Balance manga. So, plenty of Star Wars coming up and plenty of dogs that are very excited about it. Check out our new releases page at utini.com. And of course, now, once you buy those things, you can add them to your Utini bookshelf. Look at that. All right, Charles, back to you for two really lovely written book reviews this week, if you would be so kind. Sure. Yeah, so the first one we have here is from Angelia, who I think was one of our new listeners or live listeners rather uh, at the last bounty hunt that we had that's right um yes and angelia read the clone wars no prisoners by karen travis and gave it five stars called it entertaining thought-provoking and an all-around amazing book and Let's see. Angelia goes on to say, this book has everything I want out of a Clone Wars era Star Wars book. Battles, amazing characters, and thought-provoking questions that ultimately have no right answer. Travis tackles philosophical questions such as the Jedi's view of attachment and the moral question of the clone's existence. We see how different leaders such as Anakin and Rex view their troops and the conflicts they face when their men die. It was fun seeing Captain Paleon in the infamous Thrawn tr or from the infamous Thrawn trilogy. I definitely wasn't expecting that. Her characterization of him was spot on. In fact, her characterization of all Star Wars regulars was spot on. One of the best Star Wars books I've read in terms of proper characterization. I particularly enjoyed her interpretation of Captain Rex. Travis was able to emphasize his stoic, strong nature while still emphasizing his deep devotion and love for the men he commands. He is one of my favorite characters in the entire Star Wars universe and, in my opinion, deserves more books from his point of view. This is the only one I know of, but I would love more. There seem to be legends books that are considered, well, legends among legends, if you will. Essential reads. While I've only been reading Star Wars literature for a little under a year, thanks mostly to this site, by the way, and I know that's not a long time, I still think it's strange that I have yet to hear anyone talk about this book. In my opinion, it deserves to be considered one of the essential reads for anyone interested in legends and Clone Wars era literature. This was one of my favorite Star Wars books so far, and I'm amazed that it has not gotten more attention. Even though this book is no longer canon, I still highly recommend it, especially if you're a fan of the Clone Wars or the prequel era of Star Wars. Well done, indeed. Excellent. So, Dang, yeah. I gotta buy this. Well <laughs> thought out review. It's a Rex Thank book. You, what am I Angela. doing? I know, seriously. Yeah. It goes with your shirt. That's right, <laughs> my boy. <laughs> my boy. Karen Travis you, is Julia. arguably the best like like clone trooper rider i think like, mm -hmm. like the whole uh, republic commando series is phenomenal too 
Also, yeah. I didn't realize this. Okay, you guys know I watched Attack of the Clones the other night, right? So I, I kind of yes. split it over two nights, and I watched the second half like night before last. And uh, on like right as the gunships land on Geonosis, like after they picked everybody up, and they're at, like, and Mace Windu's like land in that assembly area, like right after that scene, yeah. right? So he jumps out of the gunship, and this clone commander runs up to him and says, "It says, uh, uh, General Windu, we have five special uh, elite." A clone commando is waiting for your instruction like he has to be talking about like the clone commando is from the like uh that game republic commando, the video game? commando. Yeah, yeah it has to be because oh. there's five of them, right oh yeah yeah i've never realized Delta that squad. before he, he, but he runs up to him he's like hey we have five specialty commando units waiting oh. for your instruction i was like bro every single I, time i awesome. watch him i learn something new it's crazy <laughs> i love that all right i'm and also, if you guys don't know, those Clone Wars books are nearly impossible to get in hardcover. They're, I've been trying to find the Wild Space one for years. They go for like $150 a piece in hardcover. So mm. I'm going to try to get that one. But I do want to read that one. Angelia, thank you. You've, you've absolutely convinced me on that one. Can't wait. What's our next one? What do we got? All right. So, Wesley, would you like to read yes. our second one from... Yes. Bree one two three. Wesley. Okay, so the next one, next review is from Bree one two three, and this person wrote a uh, wrote read Light of the Jedi by Charles Soule and gave it five stars. Whoa, just whoa. So here I am at the start of the High Republic, the farthest back you could possibly go in the canon Star Wars verse as of now. When I was looking into this, I initially thought that the Light of the Jedi was a comic, which is what I usually read. So on finding out that it was a novel and a fat one at that, I actually ruled it out <laughs> since I don't since I don't read the novels. Thick ass boy. <laughs> at all. <laughs> However, after hearing enough about it, I decided to give it a shot. So even if you don't usually find yourself reading big books either, I'll just say that all you need to get through this is love of Star Wars. It's gripping yes. in the beginning, engaging in the middle, and clearly rehooks you again at the end in such a way that makes it hard for even novel newcomers to resist spending more money on High Republic related content. I 100% agree. <laughs> yeah. Even with a brand new set of characters we don't know, with the exception of a slightly younger Yoda, and everything being set in a whole other time period of the Jedi and the Republic than we're familiar with. The book still paves the way for immediate immersion in what's going on and who's involved. For me, Light of the Jedi has also changed a lot of how I think about the Force in terms of what a Jedi can use it or can use it to do. Avar with her Force communication and Buryaga in the way he's able to sense emotion and how reaching out to it works. Bel Zedifar viewing it as heat and flame. It's so interesting to get these perspectives from all these characters while reading in a format where you're hopping in between different locations as everything progresses. And although you're constantly jumping to other places throughout the story, it all comes together to form such a whole cohesive picture that by the time you read, reach the end, things take such a turn to a point where you're just begging for more. I love how you didn't spoil that. Way to go. Right? Well done. I'm <laughs> learning from other people. <laughs> and of course, the new characters we get introduced to are unlike any characters that we've encountered till now in Star Wars. The connections, interactions, and experiences they have with each other are written really well, and you can tell that they're intended to carry over into whatever happens next. I'm super glad that I chose Light of the Jedi as my first canon Star Wars book, and I can't wait to dive into the rest of the High Republic because of it. Serves as a great foundation for a new era. It's definitely hot fire quality stuff. Hot wow. fire. Hot fire. Fantastic description. Yeah, and first at the canon very end. book. How awesome yeah. is that? First canon book. Uh, it's, it's probably uh, one of the best ones that you can pick up outside of maybe Lost Stars. And <laughs> so for real, good choice. Uh, so excellent, excellent reviews. Um, again, sometimes we get some short reviews. Sometimes you get some lengthy, like cool written reviews. And if you want any book that you've read to be featured on this show, look it up on Utini on the book profile. Scroll down to the bottom, add a star rating, add your review, and maybe we'll just read it on this very show. Who? Uh, before we go to break, one thing we forgot to mention that Okay Endar reminded us of in the chat: if you're watching us live tomorrow, Tuesday. August 10th, the out-of-print edition of Thrawn Ascendancy Greater Good, remember that book, uh, is coming out tomorrow. Uh, it says on the site right now at 10.30 Eastern Standard Time. Um, sometimes it's between 10 and 11, but right now it says more near 10.30. If you're in our Discord, keep your eyes open. Our Discord folks, get these editions and keep everyone posted when they're dropping. Go to outofprint.com. This is not an affiliate, just a heads up. 
It's got red pages, and Thrawn looks like like Mac Daddy awesome shoulder pads. So, um, <laughs> trademarked. They also All right. they also have great shirts. So if you if you're yes. looking for the book, check out their shirts. I already bought three of them. So and they fit yeah. really well, Corey. So you might want to check oh, them out too. Yeah, I have my doubts. Okay, <laughs> might be a little better there. Uh, but yes, as we said in the chat, there are limited to 750 copies. Woo. So I'm gonna be in the office and very strategically taking a long bathroom break, um, somewhere around there to get that book good luck to all of you as a reminder all right now we're gonna take a quick break and when we come back we're gonna dive into your questions let's see what happens everyone <laughs> oh welcome back all right it is time everyone to jump into the mailbag as it were we got a bunch of questions for a bunch of great listeners and we're just gonna go round robin style uh we got him in a list if we don't get to your question tonight we're sorry um we did get a lot so we will keep them all if we don't get through them and do them in a future episode but let's see charles why don't you head over to our Google Doc and uh, tell us what number you're picking so we can read along with you and uh, start us off. It's the Thanks question for... show! Whoa. Oh! <laughs> well, thank that... you guys for stalling for about um, 10 seconds. I did have the doc already pulled up, though, but thank you. Probably um, had to convert it great. into Microsoft Word. Yes, I did do that. <laughs> so I'm going to choose you question laugh. number seven, which is from Cheryl Bell. Hey, Cheryl. And Cheryl wants to know, what is it about your all-time favorite Star Wars character that cemented them as your favorite? And she says, let's say they have to be in live action. And she wants to know, when did they become your all-time favorite? Mm. So, yeah. who wants to take this I mean, one you want to start this one off? I think everyone knows <laughs> You're what your answer is. <laughs> yeah, I think I've, I think I've answered this question. I'm happy to answer it again, Cheryl. Um, I've done this a few times on the show. My favorite character is Obi-Wan Kenobi, specifically like Revenge of the Sith Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, why? I feel like he's the ultimate Jedi. I feel like he uh, has a super tragic tale, but also triumphant as well. And he always just, even though he makes mistakes, he kind of always owns up to it and kind of faces the consequences and is true to himself and what he's supposed to do or what he thinks he's supposed to do mm -hmm. as a Jedi. And I find that really admirable and something that I think we can all take a lesson on in how we live our real lives. And as, as far as when did he become my all-time favorite? So it was during, you know, the prequels. Um, I thought he was so cool when I watched the Phantom Menace, like when he fought Darth Maul and won spoiler alert, I was like, yo, this is my guy. And he just got better and better as a Jedi and had better and better hair. So I was like, yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> this, this is my dude right here. That's a great answer. Yeah. Attack, um, Attack of the clones hair. Wasn't that great. Right. Uh, yeah. Especially the, well, I will say the, when he had shaved his beard and they had to put the fake beard on for a few scenes yeah. and it looks like just real, I'm not even say what it really looks like. It looks like they like <laughs> shaved a dog and like glued it onto his face. Yeah. But yeah. Other Stay than tuned that. for our attack of the clones commentary when Charles will point that out for you. <laughs> um, my easy answer for this is Luke Skywalker. And it's the second that he ignites that green lightsaber in return of the Jedi just did it for me. But I'm going to go with a more fun answer because it's a question show. And I'll say why I love Barrel Organa so much. And <laughs> it's because, and I thought about this, 
because Bale doesn't show up that much, right? He's in the prequels a bit. He's mm. fine. Speaking of guys who could have a lot better hair later on, like he's got like that damp hair in Attack of the Clones. Not a fan. <laughs> play. He's played by two different people. Yeah. 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 But <laughs> it's in Rogue One, and it's the entrance is great. Everything he says is great. It's the moment where he's turning around and he says to Mon Mothma, he's like, I would trust her with my life. It's that moment when I'm like, Bale doesn't care the age or status of anyone he's dealing with, and especially those he loves. He respects people based on who they are. He loves them for what they represent. And I'm like, he's just so, he believes in Leia more than I believe in anything. And I'm like, how inspiring that is that he already knows that she's the future of this rebellion he's been trying to build forever. So that's when I fell in love with Bale. Man, that's a heavy Corey, answer. yeah, Corey <laughs> kind of spoiled mine earlier, but my favorite character is Ray. Um, Ray's, I love the uh, the Ray from Nowhere story. Um, I still, I still hold on to it. I don't, I don't kind of, I don't kind of, buy into the fact that she's a Palpatine, even though she is, but I, I, I go along with it, but I still I love the Ray from Nowhere story. Yeah. yeah. Um, but mostly because of her theme music, and uh, she really won me over um, when she met Luke Skywalker on Oct2, when she was oh. in that gray, um, that gray outfit, and she walked mm-hmm. up and handed it to him, and there was just, like, no dialogue. So good. So good. Um, but, yeah, because, I mean, obviously, she's all the Jedi, so she's better than everybody. Yeah. <laughs> But dude, yeah, that that look she has when she just holds it out to Luke, and it's that yeah. total vulnerability. That like exactly here we go. Ah, oh, it's a beautiful. She's I'm not knowing what's beauty. gonna happen. I mean, this is what you've risked your life for for the past however many years, yeah. and then throws it over your shoulder. Yeah, your turn, Corey. Corey likes Porkins. <laughs> Next question. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, as crazy as it is, I'm not even sure if we've ever really talked about this on this show before. I truly do not think that I have a favorite character of Star Wars. Like, there is just so about that. There are so many characters that I really, really just enjoy seeing on screen. Like, I really get a lot of every time Boba Fett shows up is always really cool. Like Luke Skywalker mm-hmm. gets me really excited. Excited, but there's just like, I don't know that there's just one character that I just hero worship. Really, I mean. Is there one that you remember of us, even if it's not your favorite, like, was there a moment you remember being like, oh, that character? Like- Malakili? Is that what it was? <laughs> <laughs> he taught me men could cry at a young age. Um. Yeah. I mean, you guys have heard me talk a lot about the Dagobah stuff from Empire. It's just like so yeah. my favorite. The dynamic between like Luke, Luke and Yoda, like I really love their those versions of both of those characters, but... I don't know. The thing about Star Wars is like the timelines are so long. There are both really good and really bad versions of virtually every character in Star Wars. <laughs> like, like Luke Skywalker yeah. is such a fantastic character, but Tashi Station Luke Skywalker is like the worst. Like seriously. Yeah. So, we all have to suck before we're great. That's right. <laughs> I was going to Tashi Station people some power converters. Uh. Yeah, totally that's fair. That's my impression. God. Do you like that? That's really <laughs> good. Well, Corey, because of that non-answer, you got to pick our next question right, where, right. where are we going next i have um i have another one so like what do you want the rules to be do we want to not use the same person like yeah times well, or, like, if you did multiple character- yeah we might go back to you some people did multiple we probably won't do two in a row okay that's it okay let's see you had two of them that i really wanted to choose i want more okay Ooh. all right i want i'm gonna use question number 14 this is from marshy Har- oh, cool. marshy harish row i like that <laughs> yeah uh, so good yeah so question 14 says uh how would you include rose tico in further star wars stories right so aggressively yes <laughs> aggressively <laughs> so, listen, we we talk a lot about positivity and stuff on this show and we're not like i think the difference between us when we talk about positivity versus like we're not like what's the word what is it? Just shills. We're not like shills. Yeah, for we don't positivity, ignore the right? flaws of stuff. Yes, we don't ignore <laughs> yeah. the flaws of stuff. Like yeah. Rose Tico has some flaws, and like some of the criticism of her character is justified. But like, like the human element of Rose Tico being Kelly Marie Tran or getting bullied off of social media and all this kind of crap. Like, you know, first and foremost, Star Wars is about people. It's about creators. It's about artists. It's about actors and actresses. Like. It's about people, right? Star Wars is about people. Mm-hmm. So the way that mm-hmm. Kelly Marie Tran was treated in the prequel tri- in the sequel trilogy is unforgivable in my eyes. It really is, both mm-hmm. by the fan community and by the creative community at Lucasfilm that 
totally screwed her out of a role in the rise of skywalker it's unacceptable still to this day i will that will be i will die on this hill like i do not believe that the way that they treated her was was right right i'm just i'm still mad about it like i can get behind all the canon decisions in rise of skywalker i'm still pretty upset that they bullied uh kelly marie train the way they did so how can we redeem her story this is very interesting to me i would love to see rose tico as a like lando calrissian type of general in star wars storytelling right Yo. like like she, she shows up way later after and people know like like the rose you're the rose you know what i mean like she did finn oh, yeah that would be God, fantastic i would love like, that like let her the go rose. on to be a princess leia type legacy right where she was involved <laughs> in the in the rebuilding of the of the uh, new republic like I mean, her story could really be redeemed very well, I think, in the expanded mm-hmm. universe of the books and comics and that sort of thing. And I hope they do it one day. I hope she gets yeah. her justice because I really do feel like she was slighted and I would love to see her come back around Ooh. as a as a as a fan favorite, right? Like yeah, it's, it's one of the totally. best things ever when they take a character that people dislike and and like turn her into a, a fan favorite. So yeah, she really deserves more screen time. So we, you could, uh-huh. you could, she could be in any number of things. It doesn't even have to be like what you said, Corey. Like as a general, but um, mm-hmm. a, a high rank, some kind of high ranking officer within mm-hmm. the re- New Republic would be perfect. Right. And then really just put the story all around her. She's the one giving the order, and then something goes wrong, and she has to go in to to fix the issue because she's the only one that knows about it because they made her study all those books. I know on, at the yeah. very end of that movie, yeah, you know? know. So totally. that would be really yeah. cool. I mean, we think we think about it at the end of Rise of Skywalker, right? Like Leia's gone, Finn is basically gonna go be a Jedi, right. Ray's gonna be a Jedi. Like Which we Rose need someone do, to right? like. Yeah, I, I want her to kind of be a mixture of Leia Mon Mothma E too. I want her yeah, to be like involved in the re in the yeah. recreation. I mean yes. like and I want her to always be running back and forth with too many data pads and dropping them <laughs> and being like, Oh, I'm, I'm late for so many meetings. Like you could have some really fun comedy with that, but because everyone wants Rose. I want everyone to be like, I need Rose on my committee. I need Rose on my committee. And she's like, I just want some like Tonnery wine and for everyone to shut up for a day. Yeah. Like, I think that could be like very much like Leia and Bloodline. I yeah. think that would be fun to have that be so a Rose too. type thing. I agree 100%. Yeah. I, I'm going to think on a smaller and more intimate scale. And this came to me as I was listening to y'all talking. One of the biggest things that uh, made me sad when we learned about things that were cut from the rise of Skywalker was that supposed scene uh, between like Ray and, and Rose, like really yeah. having like a heart to heart and talking about things. And I think their dynamic is really incredibly interesting. And I would love to see, like, we don't know what Ray's up to obviously, but let's assume she's out there kind of still learning about what it means to be a Jedi. I would love to see like her and Rose, like just going around the universe searching for those answers and rose does the tech stuff and uh Mm -hmm. ray does the force stuff and just a real (laughs) intimate story about like their friendship and their adventures i i would read or play or watch the heck out of that yeah for sure that'd be great and we do get i think as another plug I think we do get a Ray Rose story in Spark of the Resistance, that Justina we Ireland do. book. Um, yep. So if, if, if you're interested in that dynamic as well as Charles mm-hmm. is, that's a great – it's a middle grade um, that was the prequel to uh, – Ride – not Ride, Road to. That was it. I think the uh, Last Jedi? Journey to. Journey to. Thank you. I'm like, that's not right. Um, <laughs> but again, one of those books, if you missed it, Justina Ireland, who's doing obviously a ton of High Republic stuff, go check that book out. It's really good. Uh, Angelia brings up a good point in the chat. She says lots of oh. people thought Ahsoka was really annoying at first. Now everyone loves her. We've seen it happen. It would be great for her too. Yeah. I was, I was trying oh, yeah. to think of an example I because yeah. it's happened over and over again in Star Wars that characters are introduced and people really dislike them and then they mm-hmm. become fan favorites over time. It's just how it is, right? So, yeah. I'm Ahmed Best, like, standing ovation yeah, at dude. Celebration yeah. or whatever. Like, me, for it real. It made me cry. It's the only time I've ever in my life cried in a huge crowd of people. But, like, it, yeah. it moved me to tears to see that happen. Also, Charles, isn't she in Ride in the Last Dragon? Don't you like that movie? Isn't that a pretty good movie? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Can we talk about Is that one of the questions? Go <laughs> 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 watch Ryan. It's incredible. <laughs> uh, and, and Blind Face in the chat brings up a great point as well. There's some good Rose stuff already happening in the comics. Her Age of Resistance one shot is dope. It is. Totally um, and dope. I think some short form storytelling like Ahsoka, like if there does happen to be like a sequel era animated show or there's like some comics and stuff, I think she can pop up a ton. Yeah, love that. Um, Wes, where are we going next? 
These are we great, by the way. We are going with a question from Obi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> yes. And we're gonna do uh, question number three. Okay. All right. Uh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. Question number four. Question number four. Oh, except you... for, of course, the High Republic. What Star Wars book would you like to see turned into a live action movie, and which other one in an animated one? Oh man. Ooh. So, Ooh. I will start us off with the live action movie. I want an Ocean's Eleven heist movie around Timothy Zahn's oh Scoundrels God. book. Yeah. That's, a, that's a fantastic <laughs> answer. The, the whole premise of that book is, is uh, Han is oh. getting together a team of of like smugglers of of like cat burglars of yeah. anybody and everybody that's great to um i don't even remember what they were trying to steal they were uh, i've read it so long it ago but didn't matter <laughs> but the very end the very the end was great of independence in <laughs> but it, oh is, a, it is a phenomenal heist book and the, and the yeah. very end the very end will make you want to reread it all over again so yeah, yeah. Um, also just just use brad pitt as han solo like screw it why not, why not? <laughs> oh then, that's a great choice uh my animated pick charles um would be a uh would be a, <laughs> a show of on force collector because it's <laughs> it'd be great to see all the callbacks in an animated version in that book i That's actually fair. i liked i liked all the callbacks in force collector so it, i thought it was pretty good i'd have uh, to watch solid it i didn't read it <laughs> I, I i have an immediate answer um as well Go. um very on brand for me i would love to see the book rebel rising turned into a live action film um i think uh uh Felic F felicity Jones? Felicity Jones, yes. Jones. Felicity Jones, Jones, like, has the, like, look to play herself, even as a younger version. I think it would be fine. Um, Like, I think she's still young enough to be able mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. And, like, that's a fantastic book. And I would love to see, I would love to see the dark, the dark part of Saw Gerrera's rebellion, right? Like, yeah. where he shoots up that party Whoa. and kills all those politicians with machine guns. Like, <laughs> it's wild. Put that shit on, on screen, man. I would love to see that. So, Rebel Rising would be a great one. I don't have a, I don't have an answer uh, for animated show. Yet. Animation. Uh, I have an easy one for animation. It's totally cheating, so I have two. Animation one is Dark Disciple because it was supposed to be the Clone Wars anyway. Cop so out. just animate it. Ah, Cop out. Um, Doesn't count. Exactly. So my actual one is a little bit of a curveball. I want to see animated myths and fables. Ooh, I want them fun. to make this like oh, a yeah. Disney Plus limited series, and 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 I want them to do it like they're like they're doing with um, Star Wars Visions. I want a different animation style for each tale, and I want um, oh, cool. I want them to use that. So that would be my choice for animation. Live action is tough because I, I love the idea that books live in books, and like yeah. we're we're all agreed that like each medium is great. But for the purpose of the question, I mean, an Elephant Squadron trilogy in live action. I mean, I want to see those good. ship battles. I would love to see those. It would just be so cool. Um, or I'm sorry, I'm gonna do one one more extra one because now I'm now I'm on this roll. I want to see Master and Apprentice in live action. I want more oh, Qui Gon okay. and Obi Wan in my life. Hey, how do you think? Uh, nice how do you think Lost? Cool how do you think? Uh, how do you think Lost Stars would do in live action? You think animation would be a better purpose? A better? I don't if know. If it was rated R, it'd There's... be great. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, the cave sex scene. That's just what you I want. I mean, honestly, <laughs> it's it's so weird that it's such a book to me yeah like, i know it kind of is to me yeah. too it's i'm not really such sure a it book do it, it spans was... such a wide time frame that it'd be hard to put in a movie it would be yeah maybe like yeah. a, a disney plus series mm -hmm. yeah i don't know charles yeah. what do you think so so i was also gonna say alphabet squadron for live action because i can just like see how like dark and gritty and grungy that would be uh -huh. i think it would be fantastic and animated I'm actually going to say I would love to see something from the High Republic animated. So like, you know, Light of the Jedi or or anything like that. I would I would love to see because it's cool with the young reader books to see like kind of the cartoon type depictions yeah, of like Buryaga or Loden Great Storm or whatever. And I would watch yeah. a whole show like that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I Agreed. like it. Who's next? All right. Uh, I'll take the next one. Yeah. Let's do. Um, ooh, okay. I'm gonna grab uh, question number 19 from Moonflyer, who says, "If you could take any one technology from a galaxy far, far away and make it real, 
what would you choose? And oh man, that's a good one. I have an immediate one that is, I think, going to be obvious once I say it. Uh, it's Bacta. Damn it! <laughs> like I think, like like oh, just put it on your body. Broken bone, cut, sickness. Back to tank. I feel like this. Really fast, I know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that may speak a little more to like the world we're living in now than anything else. But I think just if Bacta was real, uh, also. I think the fact that the planets that hold Bacta are being attacked are also very realistic about what would happen if we found mm -hmm. Bacta. Like, that would be a war zone unlike anything else we've ever seen. Uh, but, yeah, that's my choice. Mm, man, there's so many Bacta. good answers for this question. So yeah. many good answers for this question. <laughs> um, I don't know if I have one immediately. Do you guys have one? Uh yeah. Wes, you had back to based on your reaction. <laughs> yeah, I, I want I need back to now, to be honest with you. Yeah. <laughs> Before uh, back, man. Putting the back in back to heard you. Um any one technology from a galaxy far, far away. Cause we are kind of getting them. I mean, like the iPad is basically Star Wars about. tech. It is, yeah. You know? it's coming out. I mean, we would all be lying to ourselves if we did not all want a lightsaber for real at some point. In yeah, time. for like, sure. I mean, yeah. that is like such an easy answer. Like a like, hyperdrive. I, I remember. I remember yeah. a time when I was in like middle school. I went through a phase where I was just like really sad all the time because I couldn't have a real <laughs> lightsaber in real life. Like I would like. Yeah. It, it, I would like. I would like read about lightsaber technology on the internet as a dumb kid. And be like, why isn't this here yet? It should be here. This is so sad. <laughs> like terrible, terrible, strange, strange times. My wife is like, okay. I room. wouldn't mind my doors opening up. From oh, bottom yeah. to top in Dude, my house. I've been, oh, thinking, yeah. about, I've been, I've been you know thinking about building one of those. I, I kid you not. There are videos on YouTube about how to use an air pressure what? system and how to do the. You can do that, yeah. like where they you use you use two pocket doors. They're small, and you can like hook it up to like a like an air tank in your basement. Run the lines through the walls, and it'll do it. It makes the sound Christ. and everything. I've thought about doing it for real. One day, oh my god, one day I'm gonna post it in Slack, and you guys are just gonna be like, I'm not even surprised. <laughs> Oh, All right, Corey, you just run away with my answer. I, I answered that. That's mine. That's me. I want the Star Wars doors in my house. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Charles, any ideas on the doors back yeah. to? And well, I'm just, I'm wondering if maybe Corey could put one of those doors in his trailer to fix it. Oh, uh, my God. <laughs> but... Maybe some kind of door would work there finally. I broke the door in my yeah. trailer, guys, just for the record. <laughs> I don't know this, yes, this David, question. Yes. This question, my answer probably is going to be what Wes mentioned. It probably would be a hyperdrive because, like, whenever I get that like classic question, like, "Oh, what superpower would you want?" It's teleportation. Yeah. Like, I would just yeah, want right, to be somewhere sure. else, like, be able to, I don't know, vacation on Scarif. You know, we literally have no star. other known habitable planets in, in real life, Charles. <laughs> that Not yet. I love. Not teleport. Yet. Both, just teleport you know inside what? a bank Listen, vault and if then you were to get if, there's if this I thing that's give you, a galaxy far, far away. Oh my god! Okay? If I could give you a hyperdrive right now, now what? Like <laughs> maybe we find it. So maybe you we have find a hyperdrive. Cor now what Corey are you gonna do? <laughs> Corey basically is just like, hey, you know, every science fiction thing that's ever been written in history, it's dumb. <laughs> like exploring the universe. Idiots. Corey. All idiots. <laughs> oh my god. All right. All right. Let's Charles, take something else. Stay, stick it to him, Charles, to get our get our next question and get something else Corey will think is stupid. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try a question from Rob Neese. So number 11 in this document. Says, oh, yeah. Like this one. Who is an active author that you'd love to see write a Star Wars book in the future? And what kind of story would you like them to tell? And are we saying active author? Does he mean non Star Wars author? Like that? we? Because it sounds like uh, it could yeah, go either that's, way. That's what, I'm, that's what I feel like he's asking. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So non Star Wars. Let's say non Star Wars. And they don't, I'm going to say they don't have to be alive because maybe that's. I don't know if that's what he meant. Like they're actively writing still, but mm -hmm. listen, so I many, read so I read Kevin Scott's book in like five hours the day before we had to finish it. I, like let's I'm not reading any other books right now. Let's be real. So I cannot name <laughs> I cannot name another author that I would like to see right now in Star Wars. I, I I'm gonna okay. Go ahead, Wes. Uh, Charles, it's your question. Go ahead and start. Okay. All right. So I <laughs> used to be super into uh, mafia stories, like gangster stories. Like I loved The Godfather. Um, mm. I read all kinds of books, and Good I fellas. fell in love with this author 
uh, named Zeno. Lorenzo Carcaterra, who wrote all all kinds of just really hell cool of a name. Books. Yeah. Italian and and um, so I would love yeah, to is he, see... Is he maybe Italian? <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see him write uh, like Crimson Dawn or, oh you know, God. some Please kind of bring in a mafia writer for, for the... <laughs> yeah. for Crimson the, Dawn! Crimson he does it so well, and he, he creates these really layered stories oh, and complicated man. characters, and answer. to see that done in I love Star that. Wars, I, I would love it. Oh, that's great. Um, so I have a selection. I would, <laughs> I would, my active author would be Clive Barker. I would have Clive Barker Who's write that? a Star Wars horror film. He wrote uh, Hellraiser, Candyman. Oh, the, okay, the, sure. The okay, Midnight okay. Meat Train. <laughs> All of the VHS um, covers that scared me when I walked through Hollywood videos. There that's you go. right. <laughs> So I would love to see him uh, do like a Star Wars horror film, like about probably Han and Chewie escaping a rolling stampede mm. from a group of rant raptors. He has right? he has a play called The Sack. Yeah, he, also he did horror. a um, he did a Thanks he did a that. pretty uh, creepy video game like years ago called Undying that I uh, right. that I bought. It was super good, um, right. and that was his first that was his first uh, move into video games, and he did really well with it. But yeah, Clive Barker is a uh, is a sick cool. man, sick sick man with his horror films, and uh, mm -hmm. Hellraiser is still haunts me to this day. Well, if the three <laughs> of us go missing, we know who did it. Eric, what's your answer? <laughs> Absolutely easily. Um, uh, so mine is going to be an author that Charlie actually turned me on to. Um, it is a author that does a lot with like magical realism and a lot of like very non literal writing. And it's called, uh, her name's Erin Morgenstern. She wrote the books The Night Circus and The Starless Sea. Um, if you ever read those, they're really incredible, like magic meets real world building stuff. The characters are great and her writing style is very unlike anyone else I've ever read. And I'd love for her to do a book about like, that's what I'll raise Jedi journey to be like, have it be by someone who doesn't write so literally have someone that actually has a lot of like going between worlds and realities and like things like that. Um, so if you've ever read any Aaron Morgenstern stuff, uh, she's also a huge nerd. Like she plays a ton of Bioware video games and like clearly loves a lot of like just genre stuff anyway. So I think that I know she's writing another book right now, but in the future, if she was ever open to IP, I think that she would be a great author to just give her the money, leave her alone for like six years, and let her write the thing. Um, and if you haven't read The Night Circus or Starless Sea yet, I highly, highly recommend them. Um, my other an real answer is uh, the author that I want to write Star Wars most in the world is Chuck Wendig, and it'll never happen. Uh, but anyway, oh. moving on. Um, Corey, where did you have an answer or no? No, no, I, 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 really read. Don't have, I don't have it. Re Wait, answer. can I ask a follow up question that I'm yeah. curious yeah. about? Do y'all have a favorite book that is not a Star Wars book, like that you've ever read? Yes. Ooh. <laughs> Wes, what is it? <laughs> Mine is Hitman. <clears throat> um, which oh is about uh, Brett the Hitman die. Hart, which is a <laughs> which is a professional wrestler. It's about <laughs> it's 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 his whole uh, it's his whole it's like a uh, it's a it's a biography of uh, Brett the Hitman Hart. It's really good. Mm. Love that, mom. Um, uh, it's hard. this is like saying what's your favorite movie, and my brain goes like I've never seen a movie. Um, yeah, I know. But I think that my it, it, it's such recency bias. But despite the joke I just made, um, Wanderers by Chuck Wendig that came out a couple years ago was the the most recent book that I can remember like finishing and like sitting in like awe for like a while. And like everyone I knew, I'm like, this is like a 900 page book. Do you want to borrow it? Like you got to read it. You got to read it. And that one kind of really changed my perspective on a lot. Uh, very hard to read during a worldwide pandemic though. Just a heads up. Cause <laughs> it is definitely about a plague that wipes out uh, humans. That's good. Uh, I have I have a stupid answer. You guys are gonna laugh at me for this. Uh, my favorite book that I've literally ever read is a self help book. <laughs> hey, that's uh, that stupid. That's it's, great. Um, it's that it's that leadership book that I'm always talking about, Extreme Ownership by Jocko Willing, yeah. who was a ex Navy SEAL, and it's like that book has Dude. like. It's it's such a it's such a cliche that people are like oh this self help book changed my life right that's such a cliche but that's literally what supposed to do literally everything about that book has like totally changed my perspective on leadership and life and and like friendships and relationships and it's just really really good about owning challenges and like turning them into positives and 
It's a good book. Yeah. Highly recommend it. So you were like a worse person before that book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, believe it or not. How that can is, that be? <laughs> it's <is> possible. <laughs> no, oh. that's great. All right. <laughs> Before we get too much about loving each other and hyping each other up, Wes, what's our next question? <laughs> these are All great, right. y'all. Thank you for I'm gonna, these. I'm going to run back to uh, to Cheryl. Do Cheryl it. did a great question here. Um, let's see what number it is. Uh, number eight. eight. I know. Number I eight. Earlier. When I asked the question, can you can I ask the same person <laughs> twice? This is the question I was talking about. Oh, sweet. Let's do it. Number eight. So who is your favorite obscure background character in the films – who had no dialogue, noises or grunting, growling, whooping is okay, and was up. on screen for no more than, say, a minute. Okay. And what about them made you love them so much? All right. Wes, what do you got? Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save mine for the end. Okay. I have an answer <laughs> okay. because I picked it earlier. <laughs> Go for it. All right. My favorite, my favorite background character that has virtually no lines whatsoever is the Kubaz from episode four. His name nice. is uh, his name is Grindin. <laughs> now the Kubaz yep. is, is uh, this guy. Excuse me. Yeah, uh, here's the I pulled it up. There's the literally a Funko Pop of this guy. This is such a dumb, obscure character. It looks like <laughs> it looks like uh, one of the plague doctors from like the Black yeah. Plague with yeah. their little yeah. Yeah, it's totally what they're supposed to look like. And I love this guy, man. He's like he's so goofy, and he has that. Phenomenal <laughs> narration by Mark Thompson in the From a Certain Point of View book, where like yeah. he does this weird nasally voice the entire time. It's just like Mark Thompson <laughs> is a god. Like seriously, <laughs> it's I love this character. He's such a goofy, goofy dude, and he's barely on screen. <laughs> All right. Oh, um, also, fun fact about this character. Sorry, uh, yeah, he yeah, yeah. was uh, one of the like one of the first characters to like not real i don't even think he got credits in the credits of the movie right like he was one of the first uh -huh. expanded universe characters meaning like like the fans like gave him a background mm -hmm. in the story and they cared about him and he was named Garendon. like none of that was in the movie right like that's the best yeah so like this yeah. is like i mean he's that's in like great. the that's first great. he's in like the first 20 minutes of the film or something like that right so yeah yeah, Adam. Adam in our chat, our, our glorious Adam Dyson, who's awake during now, said Sarlacc. Nice. Yeah, the Sarlacc's pretty good. Um, I need to do some grunting and some whooping. Yeah, I have a I have a cheating answer because as far as live action film, like this is where I fell in love with this character. Then they got expanded a ton in animation, but I fell in love with them in the films. Uh, Plo Koon doesn't say yeah. anything. Yeah, and he honestly, flies. the reason looks dope. They fly out. Looks dope as hell. Yeah. He just like he has the cool mask, and I'm like, and he has three giant fingers. I'm like, what is that? Uh, and he was really cool in the Obi Wan game. So didn't hear him speak until I ever until I watched Clone Wars. But I always loved Plo Koon for that reason. Charles, I look cool. Yeah, yeah. I I mean, my mind immediately jumped to like a lot of the Cantina creatures and and mm -hmm. things like yeah. that. So like the Shistavan and like the Wolf Man, I've always thought was super cool. <laughs> But another another one that I thought of is Baron Papanoida, because it is the character what? that Baron? George Lucas himself plays. Yeah, he's, oh, the, he's right. Uh, what's their what is their species? I can't remember. They're nonchus blue skin. Uh, 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 the P, P Pantorans. Yeah, the Pantorans. So yep, that's George, George Lucas actually played Baron Papanoida and walks in the background of one of the scenes. I forgot about this. He's in the, the opera. Oh, yeah. He's in the opera, right? Uh, Yep. Yeah, I think he's like one of the people that gets up and here he gets, is. and leaves or something. This is a terrible image, but like, yeah, he's like in the background. <laughs> yeah, the there, that's there a great is. call. And man, I, I mean, that's just like such a fun fact. And it's George and the thing that he created that we all love. So it's fun. Is that the only <laughs> yeah. character he played in all of Star Wars? Yep. Wow. Far as I'm yep. In Revenge of the Sith, no less. Fantastic. Yep. On a, on a similar note, before Wes gives his, which I'm so excited about, I want to throw an Ahmed Beck from episode two, which is Ahmed Best's cameo character in the bar uh, that gets literally a frame. Uh, the only time he's at, uh, it's in episode two in the in the bar. What's oh, the name yeah, of the bar, yeah, Charles? Yeah. You, know, you guys know? Club. Want to buy some dead sticks? Oh, that yeah. out, the Outlander Club. <laughs> and the Outlander his name is Ahmed Beck, which nice. is a figure that I have bought. Our buddy, my buddy Ian from last episode for Christmas before. So that's fantastic. Ahmed nice. Beck. Fun Wes, fact, when, what we is watched, your... when we watched Attack of the Clones the other night, I yelled at Caitlin multiple times, like, look, look, this is a part. This is where he is. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, shut up. <laughs> this is the choice was, I've made. It was really good. 
Wes, All right. it's better be freaking good. You built this up. <laughs> so my favorite obscure background character is Luleo Primok. What? Leo? How do you Go say? on. Leo Primok was the little fish singer from Solo. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh. Oh my God. <laughs> that is so good. <laughs> That's amazing. It's a chicken with chicken in the pot, right? That's yeah. the name of the song. And yeah. apparently he was, he was that whole, that they're both a group and that uh, Dryden Voss made enough money to actually bring them on so they were a hot act but he had a uh he had a, a big hit song called your love is gravy oh my god <laughs> i love star wars so much it's so ridiculous it's so this, this guy Primark. the little guy that in the, guy in the jar in the jar <laughs> <laughs> like, it's so like out of key and like not at all related like her singing is all like sexy and good and like really talented and he's just like, <laughs> he's like blah 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 <laughs> Luleo Primok, though. I'm never going to forget it now. That is never, a, never. That is an excellent, <laughs> excellent answer. Great, great choice. All right, Corey, <laughs> next question. Okay, there was a question earlier that I was going to ask. What was it? Oh, here it is. Uh, number two is, is for also from Obi-Wan Kenobi. It says, aside from Star Wars and Marvel slash DC Comics, what's another franchise you love and watch slash read pretty much everything from. Um, this is so sort of a cop out answer for me, but I am like an absolute sucker for Band of Brothers. Like I absolutely uh, love mm -hmm. the European Front, World War II mm -hmm. history. I'm just I just really enjoy reading books and watching movies, and I need to pick up a good World War II book. I haven't read one in a long time. Um, that's there is that's a, a uh, there's a new series coming um, being produced by. Um, Spielberg and Tom Hanks and the same people that produced the Band of Brothers called Masters of the Air, uh, which is based on the book called Masters of the Air, which is about like I think it's a bomber squadron in World War II. So like that's they started that's they started so filming you. in February of last year, and I've been waiting for this development for literally like it's been rumored for like a decade. So I can't wait mm -hmm. for this to come out. It's gonna be super fun. So love me some classic Ooh. world war ii stuff i've seen virtually every world war ii movies ever been made like including all the old old black and white stuff like, mm -hmm. i love that stuff a bridge Have too far seen... oh my god oh man so good <laughs> freaking uh what's his name uh it's uh uh he, he talks like this oh what's the guy? <laughs> sean connery sean connery <laughs> Wow. Great impression, dude. Oh my god. <laughs> it's Sean Connery's that in it. Wild. So good. Excellent. Wes, I knew I could count on you. Have you yeah. seen Saving Private Ryan? It's really good. <laughs> Saving Ryan's private. <laughs> Indie film. <laughs> All right. Uh no. I'm I'm gonna do a uh this is hard because with just with the amount of time that's in the world, like Star Wars takes the time. It does take so and much then, time. Like, so and then I watch Marvel movies and all the Marvel shows, but that's that that's out there. So I'm gonna give two that I, I try to um the first is mass effect um i love those are some of my favorite games of all time yeah. i try to read the books when they come out i try to keep up on the lore as i can that's a giant i, I own a ton of like merchandise if i guess that's kind of like the way to go um another one this is so weird i love love the lord of the rings i've mm. never read the books mm. i've read the hobbit but I and I'm, I'm, not, but, I'm not sure that you can say I love love the Lord of the Rings because you're like oh, I've never read the books, you know. So, but here's the thing: <laughs> I love those movies so much, and I think the lore is so incredible. I just don't have. I've seen the movies. I don't have the time. So I'm. But if you're asking me what my favorite like upcoming. Mm project is is that lord of the rings amazon series i'm like clear my schedule like that's all i want yeah. is that so that's what i'm i'm excited to be more into i guess is my answer to this question okay. oh, oh and the, the dallas cowboys <laughs> the literal franchise that i love oh Shout out yeah to i guess, the uh, I guess sports too yeah. Very good. yeah i guess yeah the <laughs> nfl yeah yeah I, um i think if we're talking like I don't know intellectual properties like those kind of things i would say some of my top ones are doctor who i was super into for a long time yep i admittedly same. fell off uh during like the 12th doctor stint but like the 10th and the 11th like i watched every episode i read the books that they were writing in those time periods all those things um Kind of same goes for Sherlock Holmes. Oh, I man. have read oh, 
Nice. Everything that like has ever been That's put out for Sherlock too. Holmes, probably. Those are great um, books. Absolutely. Dude, that, that, it, including that the first, ones that they... The first one where he goes off on that huge tangent about the Mormons is like... <laughs> That is my favorite favorite thing ever that's ever happened in literature. Uh, yeah, but but even the the new stuff that you know they put out now, still if it involves Sherlock Holmes, like I'm still interested enough to read it. Yeah, um, that's good. And then other answers quickly. Uh, Firefly. Love. I have yes. never jumped Love. on the Firefly bandwagon, Love. man. I've been meaning to for a long time. It. It's, it's my favorite single season of television. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's all such, you get. such a common answer. So dang good. Yes. It's so Firefly. Good. And then if we're including books. if we're including sports, uh Miami Heat, I have very high hopes. We re-signed Jimmy Butler for like four years. We got Kyle Lowry coming. We got we got good stuff, y'all. I'm, I'm excited about next season. Hey, patrons, awesome. if you're ever interested in, like, a short-form 10- to 15-minute Utini sports podcast, let us know. <laughs> like sports. Yeah. If you want a Star Wars fan's opinion on sports, let us know. We might put that out. <laughs> All right. So mine, uh, I guess, in, instead of Star Wars, um, I'm a big pro wrestling fan. Adam knows this. Um, so I watched, I mean, ever since I was a little kid, I would watch it with my dad um on a monday nights all through the 90s and then not so much now i mean i'll, I'll try to keep up with the storylines and everything but um back with my friends that i've met in college that i'm still friends to this day are they're the diehard wrestling fans as well and that's all we talk to each other and it's like wrestling quotes and i have like my whole soundboards like messed up with with wrestling sounds i love that <laughs> <laughs> just know it so yeah big time big time wrestling mark right here i read all the books i watch all the shows watch all the pay-per-views it's stupid we have wrestlemania all my friends come over to my house we watch it even though we don't know what's going on every year i got a wrestlemania party at my house and i That's cook fantastic. and we drink it's great <laughs> how'd you how do you feel about cena coming back um i liked it i liked it outside of his his political views and him trying to make money from the damn movie that he did um he is yeah, that was um, dumb. He's he's big time. He's really over with the crowd. So the crowd wants yeah. him back. They yeah. basically these pro wrestlers are like the gladiators um from Gladiator and like from back in the Roman times too. So yeah, uh, the crowd depicts who is the who's gonna be like the winner or the champion. Because if you put if you put the belts on a champion, even though it's storyline, if you put the belt on somebody the crowd doesn't like then uh, they're going to let you know about it. They're going to boo you the entire time. They're not going to buy your merchandise. They're not going to do so any funny, of that. Dude. So it's great. They depict on who is going to be the actual. So maybe, the actual wild. maybe toxic Star Wars fans are all actually wrestling fans. Maybe that's the Yeah, problem. they just don't have an outlet. We, nah, we want to change the narrative. No, nah, <laughs> I wouldn't allow them in the group. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> well, hey, on the opposite side of toxic, our next question comes from Paul Matthews. And I love this one. I want to, I want to get your guys' opinion on this. What Star Wars character would be worthy of lifting Mjolnir? This is the most worthy, and we're talking like Captain America could do it, right? Thor could do it. The worthy, wholesome, the best we got. I got um, one. What do you got? I'm hot off the presses of my pro wrestling talk. It's the Bindu, right? He's big. Oh, He's the biggest damn guy that's out there. Of course he that's can fair. pick it up. <laughs> and he's both light and... And dark, and dark. Side. Yep. Yeah. Energy. I like so. that. I think Yoda could. Honestly, I think. I guess it might seem like a cop out, but I think Yoda could totally do it. Especially mm -hmm. like, like I'm talking about Dagobah, like pass, all, like literally the last thing he does before he falls asleep under that blanket is lift up Mjolnir and goes, oh. and then he dies. <laughs> 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 it, it was really heavy. I, like, it's, like sit, it's like sitting on the corner of the blanket, like that. So he has to move it before he like curls up and. And Luke goes over. like, "Wait, great question." Uh, chat. Uh, oh, Angelia says Obi Wan. She already said it. I I agree. <laughs> and Adam, Adam says Geo. <laughs> <laughs> did he pick it Listen, up? Or I did bet, it just uh, fall over? I bet. Uh, I bet Princess Leia could lift it. Hmm. Like That's truly, a great one. truly, yeah. I bet, I bet yeah. Princess Leia is one of the really one of the only like just characters from Star Wars that could lift it. Maybe yep. Padme, especially actually. out of the trio. Padme can no. maybe lift it. Yeah, although she has her whole like secret love life with Anakin, which is probably like a you know. <laughs> yeah, probably, Thor has a secret. Hey, Cap has a secret one. Uh, yeah, secret love as long as like for the right reasons, yeah. and I think works out. If, if Jared yeah. here, he'd say Exar Kun. <laughs> he totally <laughs> would. I think. What about what Ray? About, might. Oh, Ray could do Eventually. it. Eventually. Sure. 
So all the women in the trios is what we're saying. We're realizing can lift me on here. Yeah, and I think that Kanan could probably do it. Oh, that's great. That's a good one too. Yeah. Yeah, three PO would be so worried that everyone was touching it, and so R two would try to lift it. Chopper can lift it. I'm kidding. Three PO could only do it with the red arm. Absolutely. All right, we got probably time for a couple more. So as I said, we're not going to get to everyone's questions, which is like the best feeling, honestly, for a show to get so much input. We're going to keep this doc going. We're going to do more of these. Um, so keep them coming in future shows. Uh, but we got time for a couple more. Um, let's see if we can lightning round a couple. Charles, what do we got next? Um, all right. So from Aiden, uh, we have question number 12 that says, what direction would you take? a proposed episode 10 new characters continue the existing characters and who would your villain be oh man man. well so let's lightning around this is a big one (laughs) we 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 try not to uh you know conjecture here on this show but uh that's what we're gonna do right now (laughs) if we had the money and we had that we had the scripts that's right i mean charles your question start us out i know I know what, yeah. So everyone like, make sure that you light me up when my half cooked idea for episode 10 is not up to snuff, Um, (laughs) but I don't know. I, I really, it's hard not to continue along with those characters. I mean, obviously we, we saw the original trilogy characters all the way through episode nine, essentially. So Mm -hmm. I would really want to follow along with Ray and with Finn and see what's going on with that. Um, you know, see what becomes of of the New Republic when it's kind of reestablished. I don't know. I mean, it, the Star Wars story never ends. It's cyclical, yeah. but it never ends. Right. And so I would kind of just love to see what you would expect. Like, what are all the characters that we just finished up with doing now? Yeah. Who would the villain be, though? Uh, for sure, Palpatine comes back again. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Cut, yeah. The cut the feed. There it is. Cut the feed. Um, who would my villain be? It would probably I, I be. Hate you, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> it would. My villain would Somehow. probably be. Um, somebody new. Somebody, somebody new. Yeah. younger and far more powerful. <laughs> there it is. I don't know. I don't know. Someone in a mask. That's all. That's, That's all. good. Oh my yeah. God. It would have to be somebody new, right? I mean, they would definitely it could have be to be salacious crumb, but probably it's someone new. <laughs> yeah. Somebody that's practicing like Sith lore or found some Sith holocron mm-hmm. um, in some back world and is like, and probably. I don't want to go back to. Uh, it's a clone of Snoke. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to go back there. So. The one with no. the hat. <laughs> but I don't. I I don't want to see Ray teaching a bunch of students either. Um, right. That was. That's kind of a rehash story of what of Luke Skywalker. So, um, but what happens? That's the thing, though. What I know. what would happen to the Jedi? So listen. If she's here's not the, teaching. Here's the thing. Maybe ones. maybe it's the maybe it's the storm chaser talking. By the way, this wine <laughs> that I'm drinking is called storm, storm chaser, chaser, which yep. is the how, storm. how I did, <laughs> how I didn't know I had this for the rising storm roundtable is uh, <laughs> sorry, Kevin. It's kind of a damn shame to be to be frank. Uh, but listen, uh, the movies have to be about the constant the c- continuity of Ray's story right like of her story right. like if, later we're doing, on. If, if it was a 10 yeah yes and and here's the thing you guys have heard me bitch about this endlessly like they marketed the rise of skywalker as being like the end of the skywalker saga right and that was like the dumbest decision ever in my opinion because there is no way that they're not going to come back from this it's multi-billion dollar franchise like <laughs> freaking 10 20 years from now and be like oh episode 10 we're back baby like yeah. that is absolutely gonna happen in our lifetime it absolutely is like yeah. and they're gonna use episode 10 i mean they're gonna use that that terminology i guarantee it i guarantee mm-hmm. it's gonna happen come on all you need is the is the giant x on a poster in like 20 31 and it's like that's all that's it just, just yes, like just retcon the fact that you did this stupid <laughs> marketing campaign. We know you didn't have a plan, all right. We know you didn't have a plan. It's fine, all right. And it needs to be, it needs to be Ray's story, like of, yeah. of like wait on the. I'm not talking like like they get, it's got to be a long time in the future. I think that was the that was a great choice of this yep. uh, sequel trilogy. Yep. They went so far into the future with the older characters, but like it needs it, it needs to be like something totally new, a new villain, a new threat, a new threat to the galaxy. Maybe the Sith are still alive and they're out. You know, in the chaos, or you know, the options are endless. But 
you know, I think it was somewhat of a <laughs> of a mistake to to just pick known enemies and known characters, yeah. and it was too safe. And I I think that I'm for Avatar: Last Airbender fans, which is another universe I really love. I just backed their RPG on Kickstarter this week. Um, I would take cues from the Legend of Korra if anyone's seen that, and I would I would treat the the mm. first nine as kind of the avatar movies mm. and then i'd move like 30 years in the future like you're saying Corey. so the the, the galaxy has shifted ray is a cora type figure who's a little more like she's she's learned a lot more she's a lot more capable she's really tough but she's now dealing with the spiritual side of the force more mm -hmm. and i would actually make at the end of the the episode 10 or episode 11 i would make ray the villain who essentially sees into the force and sees I, you know, like looking into the void kind of thing and ha and and starts to falter. And then Finn, her her best pupil, has to bring her back. Has to, and not like, not searching for her. I'm talking about like spirits, like go into the, the realm of the force, use the wills, get weird about it. I would love weird force stuff. Go into the microcosm. <laughs> go, into, go into the midichlorians, that baby. That was George Lucas's original plan, as you guys taught me it a was. couple episodes back. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I would, I would, I would love some of that. Chlorian through someone's bloodstream, like magic school bus. <laughs> like the magic school bus. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh my, God. God. <laughs> my goodness. Surfing on a sound wave. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do a, uh, let's do two more. We'll do a fun final circle. So Wes, what's our, what's our penultimate? All right, we'll go down to the very bottom. Last question from Stephanie: If you could choose to have any Star Wars story. You want made to be a movie, TV show, live action, animation, book, comic, manga, graphic novel. Who or what would it be about, and who would you choose to create it, and why? Okay, so let's Any let's, let's let's change this question from like not. Like we already had a similar question earlier, right? It's not like a known story, right? Something not right. known something, story. Something Correct. new. Remake. Yes, you want a new story, but it has to be some kind of specific medium. Correct. And so, creator. Yes. And I've talked about creator. Who would I want yes. to create it? Okay. Um, okay. Um, so I've talked about this before. I need the story of Sifo-Dyas and how <clears throat> at like outside of like when it ended in Dooku Jedi Lost and then um, I guess up until episode two, that whole background of dyas out. I mean, not in, I think there's a comics, right? There's a comic story behind it. Uh -huh. um, but I would... Having read um, yeah, Kevin Scott's so novel just now, Kevin Scott would be great for this. I think I would love That's short, quick chapters to the precise point to let us know what's going on in his head, why he's having these these migraines, why he's having all these visions. I mean, I would love to see what's going on with Sifo-Dyas. That's awesome. I want a comic myself. Um, I want the, the Fulcrum comic series. I thought I wanted it as live action, but now I think I want it in the comic format. I want Bill Organa sending Sabe on missions. Mm -hmm. um, and I want it to be written by Charles Soule or Greg Peck, who just did the the couple of last Vader runs with the, when they brought the Amidalans back. I thought that was freaking incredible. Mm -hmm. And I would love like a spy series mm -hmm. with Bale and Sabe um, in the early rebellion times. Like maybe for like, like 20 to 40 issues hmm. that's what i would love a lot of issues <laughs> yeah it is i would like to see i would like to see some of the this is maybe somewhat of a controversial answer i would like to see some of the plagueis the content of the plagueis novel brought to life in some some form or fashion right like not necessarily like with the things that happen in the darth plagueis novel but like i would like to see a young palpatine's political story told right with that's cool yeah that's cool. like like with his like his like his rise to power i mean how he like how he Harder stumbled on to, yeah yeah right right how he stumbled into the sith right because like you know how yeah. do you how do you do that right in the book yeah. even it's just like, like he, he gets a new mentor and it's like <laughs> you know hey hey man i've been want to talk to you about this for a while listen you want to when limited power, I can give you that. Like, <laughs> like I mean, hey, how does kid. that how does that happen, right? I mean, like that would have been that'd be a fun story, I think. Whether it be, mm -hmm. I don't know, it might it might serve well as a live action show, almost a Game of Thrones esque type of yeah. Oh, that'd the, be cool. All the politics, I love that. maybe Naboo politics and Senate politics, and like backstabbing and 
That would be fun. Some like political Coruscant stuff. That would be fun. Yeah. <gasps> oh my God. Sorry, Charles. I'm, I'm going to forget it. One, Angelia in the chat brings up a great one we, we forgot. Claudia Gray book of Obi Wan, Satine, and Qui Gon during that year on Mandalore. Yeah. Where okay. I was literally thinking, I watched that arc yesterday yeah. or the Clone Wars yeah. TV show arc. And I'm like, <laughs> I, I literally almost texted you guys. It was like one in the morning. And I was like, why don't we have the Satine story yet? Where the yep. hell is the Satine story? We need it. Claudia Gray YA, uh, and this will never happen, so I'll just say it. I want the Aaron Sorkin West Wing, but in the, the Senate. I want, like, the, the Galactic Senate of, like, walking down halls and talking about policy and doing all these things. Obviously, starring Bail Organa, because Jimmy Smith was already in the West Wing. He knows how it goes. <laughs> oh, my God. Caroline, in the chat, you're going to hit this on the delay. You just typed that in the chat, <laughs> so we are connected. Where's Martin Sheen in this whole thing? Uh, he's, oh, my God. He's the chancellor. There you go. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, Charles. What do you okay, got? All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Sorry. While we're on that, while we're on the political thing, the go, go. Valorum has to be a huge character in in the Palpatine yeah. show, right? Yeah. Like, and yeah. he's yeah. He, he needs to be like a like an evil conniving backstabbing son of a bitch like not like the kind yeah. guy that we see on screen that we're all like, oh well, he's been voted out. That really sucks. Like, no, he needs to be like evil, like fantastic. Dude, we, I mean. Kevin Spacey being a truly horrific human being ruined the fact that we had some great political drama TV shows for a while. That's right. So now we just need to replace it and put like a, I don't know, a, a data pad in there every once in a while and be like, oh, right, it is Star Wars anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, Charles, what do you got? Yeah. Charles, what do you got? I, I think I answered my the best answer I had earlier to, uh, I think it was Josiah's question. And I, I want a pod racing story. Like yeah. mm -hmm. I would, I would like it to be like a limited show on like Disney plus or something like that. But like, I, I would love if it was like new characters, but you know what else I'd love is if like you followed through like a whole season, like all of the backstabbing and stuff that happened amongst all the pod racers that end up in what we see in the Phantom Menace. And I don't know every time someone crashes or something like that, like you feel it. Cause like, you know, that whole yeah. character story and like what it took mm -hmm. for them to get there and why they're racing and this and that, like, I would just absolutely love to see that. Yeah. And the other Starring thing, Vin is Diesel as Ben Quadraneros. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. And the other thing I'd love to see is <laughs> what they're already doing with this Obi Wan series. So oh I don't, God. I don't have to think too hard just, about that. You ever just like you're driving down the road or like you're in the shower and you get in that really deep thinking place and you're like, damn, there's gonna be an Obi Wan show. <laughs> like, <laughs> pretty I, much, it's my first yes. thought every morning when I wake up and it's my last one. Like, <laughs> how are we it, so blessed to be alive? This is happening. That is still. Still one of the best moments in Star Wars announcement meta history when Kathleen Kennedy brought Ewan McGregor out and said, tell them, tell them there's going to be a new Obi-Wan show. Yeah. And he goes, I'm going to be back for yes. Obi-Wan. And just everybody yeah, like, just loses their damn, remember I broke my lamp, remember? I threw a yeah. pillow and broke a lamp in my living room. I, mean, I was so excited. Like, Ewan, are you going to play Obi-Wan Kenobi again? And that long dramatic yes. pause. Yes, like, it's just. And I, I was at a man. friend's house, and I brought up my phone and watched the clip, and just started screaming. Because that's the thing. Like, I feel like I love the Mandalorian. I love Clone Wars. Y'all were so spoiled, just assuming Star Wars content. Like, this is still the biggest deal in the world oh, that he said yes. Wait. When is it coming out? Do we have a date yet or a known? 2022 is what they're still saying. Woo! I'm going to already assume it's going to be pushed to 2023. Yeah, wouldn't be Let's surprised. just assume COVID adds a year. Mm. Um, but that's that's what I got. Uh, oh, God. Now I'm just excited about Obi-Wan. Uh, Corey, bring us home. One final oh, question for tonight's episode. I wasn't episode. expecting to be me. I've had too much wine. Somebody else use a question. <laughs> all right. All right. I got it. Here, I'll, I'll, pick, I'll, pick our, I'll pick our last okay. one. I'll pick our last one. All right. Let's do, oh my gosh, so many good ones. All right, okay, this is a great, like a big picture one. Uh, another one from Obi-Wan, fitting. So we imagine, High Republic is finished. This is a question number three. High Republic is finished. What other project would we like the Star Wars team to come up with on this scale? Oh, man. So the next that is a great initiative. Question. The I'm next gonna say initiative. mine because I don't want anybody to steal it. West it's go. gonna be it's gonna be Kotor. It's gonna be the whole Kotor thing. They're gonna bring oh, it back around. The old Republic properly yeah. go further back. 
yeah. piggy bank even. It, on this yeah, scale, great. and I'm, I'm thinking on this scale as in a as a publishing and in, publishing initiative yeah. that can spring off into other things. Yeah, because so, let's assume yeah. five years from now, I mean, High Republic, it's already getting the Acolyte show is touching it. Let's assume it has infiltrated visual media. Maybe there's a game like like this is a thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yes. That's a great one, Wes. That's a great one. <laughs> oh, geez. Um, I think mine is going to be... <laughs> Let's go the other direction. 200 years after Return of the Jedi. Legacy of the Force era style stuff where there's now there's Jedi everywhere. The Empire is ancient history. I mean, they basically did that, but I'm talking now let's go on the galactic scale. Let's see what speeders and ships look like 200 years more technology. Let's see who's coming mm. from the unknown regions. Um, that would be fun. I think that's a great way to do I think that's I think that's in the vein of my answer too. I would like to see the the chaos brought full force into uh into known Republic space, right? Like, yes. So we have the cl we have the clash of the chaos and like the Republic, right? So like maybe the yeah. maybe it's like maybe it's called the Republic expansionary series, right? So the Republic yeah. decides they want to expand their borders. We have a unified Republic for the first time in galactic history and they're going to go outwards and try to get people like the chess and it turns into this huge civil war between like the republic and the unknown space and maybe there's a maybe there's an unknown alien or an unknown species kind of like Corey, using bong that comes in there I don't know. isn't there but there is a species <laughs> It's the Grisk. No, no. Everyone has a, a to fight one. against the Grisk. No, not that one. No, no, no. I, I don't want that one. I want a different I still one. don't get it. Corey, Corey wants <laughs> five years of Grisk stories. Thrawn Reason. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we'll call it. Yes. All right. So we got the chaos. We got the old <laughs> republic. Just posted that in the chat. It'll be called Grisk. <laughs> just Grisk. That's it. Uh, oh man, we Charles, hate the Grisk on the show. Just to be clear. <laughs> what? It can't be about pod racing, Charles. What's your what you're trying to be about pod racing? It, it, I think it'll be in the vein of uh, rod pacing. Wes, uh, <laughs> what? what? <laughs> What Wes said, I want to, I want to see like Bane era Sith Academy. Like I want to see the equivalent of what oh, we yeah, see yeah. with the Jedi temple, but with mm -hmm. the Sith, I want to see like, what kind of teaching battle. they're having. Like, yeah. What it, what it meant to be a Sith before the rule of two and all those kind of things. Listen, I gotta, I gotta be honest. I don't know that, that there could be an announcement in star Wars, like movie or, or TV history that would get me more excited than a, like a true old Republic, large scale Sith versus Jedi content. Like, yeah. like I, there, there was rumors a long time ago that that was the Ryan Johnson trilogy. That was like rumored, yeah. which I don't know if, if that it's is totally been shelved. He's, I mean, he's, he still says in every, every interview, he's, he's writing it. It's after knives out currently. Please Cause, cause God, paid him let $10 that million be dollars. an old Republic. <laughs> like I would, I would, I would be so excited. I mean, yeah. that's because they like, talk about the Sith war in the high Republic. Like they mentioned true. That's true. It. That's yep. true. They have, please let that come true. Please. Please, God. Just giant battlefields. All the Star Wars gods, I'm praying to you now. <laughs> uh, Rain down your blessings upon us. <laughs> yeah. Form oh, of Ryan Tim Johnson. <laughs> Timothy makes a great point. They also teased that era on Rebels and Malachor when we saw all the bodies. Like, I mm. there's definitely possibilities for it. And honestly, on that, I think the whole point is that whatever comes next, a lot of our questions have been tonight about what's coming next. Whatever it is, there's so many possibilities. It's all going to be so dope. In 2022 alone, we're getting Bad Batch Season 2, possibly Kenobi, possibly Andor. Like, Did we start a podcast, a Star Wars podcast at literally the best time in Star Wars literally history? Literally the best there has <laughs> ever been. <laughs> How are we going to find stuff to talk about every week? Well, here's the thing. It literally has never happened. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah. But honestly... As we as we round out tonight's episode, it is all thanks to you all that are listening for like all these questions. We thank you guys so much. We didn't even get through half of them. We're so excited to talk about more in the future, and we are so excited for you all to come on that trip with us. Like we got so much more Star Wars coming up this year, so much coming next year, and it's books, it's TV, ah, <sighs> it's all around us. And to think there was twenty years with nothing. So, <laughs> on that, everyone, that is gonna do it. 
for tonight's question-filled episode of The Living Force. Thank you so much for hanging out, participating. If you already support us on Patreon, we thank you so much for that support. Again, you can get signed up in time for our Patreon event on August 20th at utini.com slash Patreon. A special thank you to Cheryl Bell, OK Endar, Patrick Ortiz, and Carl Sander on our Jedi High Council, and Elizabeth Cloutier, Jason Mitchell, Freddie C., and Sally and Chris Eilerson on our Alliance High Command for your amazing support. You can find us on Twitter. I'm at Eric Eilerson. Corey is at Doc Star Wars MD. Charles Zet C. Hankel. Wes is at Boss West. And the show is at Living Force Pod. A special thank you to Matt Davenport, our amazing editor. Ryan, our graphic designer extraordinaire. And Wes, our producer and community manager. Thank you to Corey, Charles, and Wes for podcasting with me. Thanks to all of you for watching and listening. And as always, may the forest be with you.